you so cry, right? I did. And yeah, yeah, I saw that. Oh my god. I did. I'm the CTA Managing Director of BigEd. I started my crypto journey in 2014-15 when I was a TV anchor. That's when my TV friend asked me, Gracie, you should check out Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. So I looked at uh, the Bitcoin white paper and then I bought some BTC ETH and XRP. Mm. Early, early time, so great return, but not in big amount yeah. that I'm financially free. But basically I love uh, my, my, my crypto journey started that way. When you come into the crypto industry, is there any obstacle that you have suffered? Yes, of course. Actually, before joining Big Ad, I also worked seven years as CMO for Web2 startups. Oh. One in FinTech, one in, uh, uh, one in VR and Metaverse. Oh, yeah. So the, the idea of you know, Web2 startups is quite different, although lots of technology, that's a similarity. But the difference is mainly about you know decentralization and also in terms of the working style, we are just like digital nomads. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you travel so much, and every day I wake up a new city that I'm never, uh, I don't know, like jet lagging. All these things are something that troubles me a bit. Uh, and the fact that we also work very remotely, you don't get to see your colleagues as much as you work in Web2 startup. So occasions like this, I get to meet my colleagues from around the world. Some flew from Europe, and then some from Asia, some from United States. So basically, I love the fact that it's digital nomad, but I'm also troubled by, by that. Uh, okay, so one lesson about Vietnamese market. So whether Vietnamese market stand in the big yet now, do you have any plan for the grow in Vietnamese, Vietnamese markets? Yes, of course. So Southeast Asia in general is a big market, at, in, yes. in my opinion. So actually, right now I was in the panel at Token 249. Uh, I mentioned a few markets that we are very interested in. Southeast Asia is definitely one of them. Vietnamese market, well, I personally, like I said, I love the country. I've been, I've been there and hope I can return. Uh, I think uh, one, one challenge we have in Vietnamese market was uh, about like language barriers, one thing. Yeah. Because of realizing this challenge, we actually uh, have a localized team. Not just language-wise, but also in terms of the product localization. So there's a product manager uh, in different regions that is localizing the product so that we can provide the best user experience in each market. Another question is about Messi. Yes. So the collaboration between Big Get and Messi had like gained a, a lot of traction now. So can you say a little bit about this deal and how do you get, like you approach Messi for the strategy to sign up with Leo Messi? Of course, there's lots of challenges, lots of time put into. Uh, but to begin with, um, before the World Cup, we started to think about you know, what are some talents that we want to work with in terms of World Cup because it's 2022, the World Cup is going to attract lots of volume from a marketing perspective. We looked into some individuals like Messi, like yeah. I call GOAT, like greatest of all time, yeah. uh, but also some GOATs like individuals, but also some legendary teams. Uh, but we ended up choosing Messi because uh, he is such a good father, leader, yeah. and also uh, such a good footballer. Yeah. Um, he's very capable and he's very integrated. That's one thing, like the foundation of someone we want to work with. And then for Biget, we also looked at how Messi started off with a very hard beginning because you might know that he's actually not tall yeah. uh, with many compared with many other footballers and he had some disease when he was young yeah. and he battled that yeah. and we started off also very hard because we, yeah. we started in the crypto winter yeah. and we are not tall in that sense yeah. so uh, we see lots of similarity like just thrive there yeah. you know, don't give up and try to be the best and work hard. That's the spirit of Biget. And when we see lots of similarity and he's so good, we talk to his team. Uh, and I was in Qatar last really? year. And you probably know that that game is you so- You cry, right? I did. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Oh my God. I did. Uh, cry tremendously. And before that, I was like, 
well, I'm not a big football fan because yeah. I just don't watch game as much as lots of boys do. Mm. But I ended up like becoming a total yeah. fan and a total like just so touching. It's memorable, right? It is. So uh, did did get have to compete with others to like to take. Like, yes, we, we did compete with some other people, but I guess it's not just about the price that we're competing in terms of a sponsorship, but also uh, how we show like our professional and and they, their team actually did DD like due diligence on us oh, because really? they are also selective. Uh, they want to make sure they are working with someone who is capable, who is. Uh, intelligent and also who is very secure. They're like they, they are looking for protection and secure platform. They are from actually do DD. Wow, interesting. So, um, so in Singapore now, I see a lot of other exchanges are choosing the F Formula One team. So, the Big Get had any plan for uh, like partnership or sponsorship for Not Formula really. One? Not really. Yeah, so Why? I know some of our competitors sponsor. Um, some race teams in F1. Well, I, I love to you know be there and watch a game, but from a business and marketing point of view, uh, it's not really a good deal uh, if we have Leo Messi already, because for us, we, we also want to spend our money wisely. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have him, he's doing so well, and our partnership is so strong. So rather than diluting, you know, sponsorship and has have so many different yeah. uh, sponsors and partners, it's actually much more efficient mm -hmm. not spending money rather than adding on board. I mean that when you have a lot of partners, it means that you have take time to like take care of them, right? And then, yeah, you yeah. need to take care of them, but also you need to spend a lot of money. We yeah. would rather spend those money on uh, product development, mm -hmm. on customer service, um, you know, achieve something that is really meaningful yeah. rather than just spending blindly on marketing campaigns. Yeah, we are actually um, a very calculative team oh, really? when, when it comes to this. That, so we want to make sure for every penny that we put into a campaign or any product development, it's meaningful. Mm, I see. Yeah. I see. So did Biget had different strategy, marketing yeah, strategy in terms than other competitors, right? We started off in 2018. Mm. That's the last bear market. Yeah. Uh, 2019 very cold. By mid of 2019, there is a product that thrived. So our trading volume increased right from just a few hundreds USD, oh. you know, a little, like okay. a few hundreds. You can spend a hundred yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a lot on a daily basis, right? From a few hundreds, right after that product, we had about uh, 100 million USD in trading volume. So that's like the, our very first milestone. Yeah. Right now, of course, 100 million is nothing because we have an 8 billion trading volume yeah, on, on a daily basis, uh, on average. We started our, the copy trading product in May of 2021. That feature since then has been one of our signature products uh, and we saw lots of other exchanges mimic that. Uh, I think right now we support 110,000 elite traders on our platform and uh, uh, lots of trades has been made, lots of gains, uh, but basically copy trading is this feature where our users can copy trade from the elite trader because sometimes for a new gamer, or not gamer, but new, for a new crypto trader, they may not have the authority or the expertise to do enough research and to, do, to know everything about macroeconomic, to, to select all coins and do individual research. So if you are someone new to the market, you can try the copy trading platform because the elite trader will have the incentive to help you gain.